I'm looking forward to sharing this reader's question as it opens up a bunch of opportunities to share additional facts. Mario from the Philippines has a Grand Cherokee with a 4.0 liter engine. That's an inline six. Instead of troubleshooting the EFI system with no emission constraints whatsoever, Mario decided to put a Weber carburetor on his 4.0 liter engine and a conventional distributor. He has a couple of questions related to that that have to do with the performance. Mario writes, I have installed the aftermarket HEI distributor with a color blue distributor cap, RS14 distributor, and a Clifford manifold with a 236 Weber carburetor. The problem is it takes a long time to start. Can you please share the ignition timing for this engine? The ignition distributor that Mario describes is commonly sold at 4WD hardware and elsewhere. It's an HEI conventional distributor with a centrifugal advance and a vacuum advance canister. Keeping in mind that Mario has converted an EFI MPI engine that had a PCM managing spark and fuel. Uh, this is basically a conversion to a pre-1991 inline six-cylinder Jeep 4.2 liter setup. Given that, Mario is asking what the base timing should be. Let's reflect on a 4.2 liter inline Jeep 6. The base timing for that engine should be anywhere from 2 degrees to 12 degrees advance, uh, preferably 6 degrees advance to 12 degrees if the engine will tolerate that kind of advance without pinging. The 4.0 liter engine has a better cylinder head and combustion chamber design so it might tolerate the 12 degrees initial base timing advance depending on the advance curve in that aftermarket distributor. So what I would suggest to Mario is that he start with 12 degrees initial advance. That space timing set with the vacuum advance disconnected, taped off, and the engine at an idle speed. If the engine does not ping on the fuel octane rating that he's using, at that point, 12 degrees would be acceptable. If the engine does detonate under load, then the base timing can be retarded gradually anywhere from the 12 degree initial advance with the vacuum advance disconnected to the 6 degrees advance that it should certainly tolerate. After each of these adjustments of base timing, of course, the vacuum advance hose needs to be reconnected to the canister. Since essentially Mario has converted this engine to a conventional distributor and carburetor, we can also set the base timing using a traditional method a vacuum gauge and a tachometer. For openers, this is a dwell tack. For those familiar with the electronic fuel injection and electronic distributor era, a dwell meter would be alien. For those who are familiar with breaker points on earlier Jeep engines or any other breaker point engine, the dwell meter does make some sense. There is a tachometer function in this vintage gauge as well. Most of us are familiar with a vacuum gauge which is also used sometimes as a pressure gauge for checking fuel pump pressures and things of that sort. But in this case, we're going to set the ignition base timing using a vacuum gauge and the tachometer. We're going to set aside the timing light and use nothing but the tachometer and the vacuum gauge to get a base timing setting that should work on Mario's engine, assuming one thing, and that is that the spark timing curve built into that distributor, that is the centrifugal advance and vacuum advance, are not excessive for the base timing. So let's begin by assuming that the distributor that Mario has, that again, conventional distributor with a centrifugal advance and a vacuum advance mechanism, commonly seen in catalogs for Jeep inline six cylinder engines as a retrofit or replacement for the Motorcraft distributor, Let's assume that the base timing in that distributor, again, the centrifugal advance and the vacuum advance, are suitable for this engine design. If that is the case, then we're essentially trying to establish a base timing or idle speed timing, which was Mario's question. So, since there's a direct correlation between timing advance and idle speed, we're going to use the tachometer to tell us how far we can advance the distributor and the kind of results that we're getting. The vacuum gauge in this case will be hooked not to ported vacuum but to manifold vacuum because we're interested in the amount of manifold vacuum that the engine is producing at an idle speed. If you have an automatic transmission, base RPM would be 700 RPM or so in drive with your foot on the brake. Make sure that the vehicle is in park. It wouldn't hurt to chalk the wheels when you're adjusting timing on this level. We hook the vacuum gauge up to the intake manifold source Again, not ported vacuum source. We want to know the actual intake manifold vacuum. And watching the tachometer, 
we gradually advance the base timing of the distributor. Advance the distributor to the highest vacuum reading. Note the RPM on the tachometer. Adjust the idle speed if necessary and do it again so that your idle speed in drive is correct at this highest manifold vacuum setting. And then back the distributor off about 75 RPM. So the overall goal is highest manifold vacuum possible at an idle. Note the RPM and back the RPM off approximately 75 RPM. Remember, the 75 RPM is adjusted by retarding the ignition timing slightly, not by simply turning down the idle speed at the carburetor. This approach to timing an engine was used in the day with the assumption that the maximum timing without detonation or ping was the optimal performance level of the engine and the point at which an engine would develop the most efficiency and the best fuel economy. The vehicle can be taken for a test drive, put under load, and checked for correct spark advance, performance, acceleration, and no ping or detonation. Note that detonation or ping can be the result of too much timing advance or low octane fuel. Allow a little bit for load and take into account what the lower octane ratings of fuel are in this day and age and see how that works as a base timing setting. If you don't want to correct the fuel octane or can't correct the fuel octane, then you need to adjust either the base timing for a conventional distributor or change the spark advance curve. That would be the centrifugal advance curve or even the vacuum canister curve.